Okay, Mike, you are awesome for bringing that Murkrow. Murkrow is a very OP Pokemon, has a lot of really crazy setup stuff. And the really interesting thing here is I've been praising Murkrow for a while, and Mike came in and was like, I didn't believe you, but now I'm a believer. So let's see what makes him believe. So there's several different ways of running the Murkrow. Initially, when I brought it up, that caused people to be like, kind of put back as it was a singles Murkrow set. But it was more focused on like phasing out your opponent and finding switch opportunities. So you use like Feather Dance, Confide, you get them really weak, and then they have to switch out because they eventually just don't do damage to you. And if you have entry hazards up, then you're going to be able to distribute a lot of damage across your opponent's team while being able to set up into a tank and just forcing out your opponent with a lot of ease because of the Murkrow. And that's why, Eviolite, boom, gets the Calm Mind, so it gets to either boost or use like Feather Dance to reduce your opponent's power, and then you just don't take damage. After the Calm Mind, you're in a really safe realm right there, and it looks like the Vaporeon's actually going to set up a Rain Dance. Well, the, that would have been interesting, because if you use the Roost, so you go for Double Calm Mind and then you Roost up, the Ice Beam would actually start doing less damage because the Roost will ground you, and then those super effective hits don't matter as much, meaning that if you play the Roost pop properly, uh, Murkrow effectively only has that Dark Weakness. So you can get some really interesting situations with that, and... This is a different set though, like uh, with, when you're setting up Calm Mind, you're setting up for yourself and you're looking for the sweep from there. So I'm guessing we're going into a Dark Pulse at some point. That's bold in its own way, and from what I see on this Murkrow, there's no reason to take the offensive until you're at plus 6. You need those stats, and you might as well just get as tanky as possible. Now the burn is very unfortunate, the opponent actually probably getting more off of that burn than any Ice Beam ever could. Also rain, stab boosting, tons of damage right there actually outpaces a super effective ice beam when you think about it. So that's interesting, and the burn is, I feel the burn is actually gonna start doing more damage than these scalds here pretty soon. Actually, might have done about the same right there. So setting up the Calm Minds, Murgro's not even trying to like roost back up to full and regain, he's like, all right, I know I'm surviving this next scald, so I'm gonna keep roosting. And that's pretty interesting right there. Now my set was more like toxic stalling and stuff, but this is looking to be pretty effective. We're gonna see how it plays out. Now, I was actually reading the comments, and people were asking, alright, this is amazing. What's the EV spread? Now, seeing that's a Calm Mind Murkrow, looks like max hit points, max defense, bold nature, and that's what he said. So, I believe bold is the one that drops attack over special attack. Either way, that's big. Like, it's, it's, like, the, it's like Sableye. It's exactly like Sableye, except this guy gets the Eviolite instead of Mega Evolution. Fairly tanky, always has that prankster, but is susceptible to like status and stuff. Now, Mega Sableye can still get burned, so a lot of interesting dynamics going on. Mega Sableye is like the ultimate tank because it can't be out stalled by Toxic or something crazy like that. But Murkrow, still hanging in there. Yeah, the burn is doing more damage. So, once the plus six, then are we going to see one shots? Like, when I'm running my tanky Snorlax, he'll go Belly Drum and still not find like one hit KOs. Will Murkrow be any different? is the question so more scald more burn to deal with gotta get that roost in there and then just destroy everything um i'm wondering what that last move is is it the feather dance like feather dance with the high hit or high defensive investment is a bit risky because it means you are taking more damage as you're setting up those calm lines but we just have to see maybe it's like a silly tailwind you tailwind into dark pulls after that so you outspeed your opponent without Prankster, and then you go for like Dark Pulse stuff if you are going to be on that hit point investment. It does give you a bit more opportunities right there. I'll see about Murkrow more for the team play, but this is a sweet Murkrow. This Murkrow wants to sweep by himself and carry and just be like, yo, I can stop you as just me. That's all that matters. So Murkrow is now going to use the Dark Pulse. Stab boost to Dark Pulse is going to two shot the Vapor is what it looks like. And now with the Rain Dance coming up, we can start to see some more follow through, so Weather's in play, doesn't really do too much more for Vaporeon. That is going to be the leftovers. Oh boy. And Murkrow takes a bit of burn, but you can get the finish off right here. So Murkrow will be landing that Dark Pulse, and that will be enough to take out the Vaporeon. So yeah, it's like two at KO realms. Vaporeon is a tanky Pokemon, but I don't see like even against Sweepers or Frail Pokemon, it's going to be doing too much. And now Scizor comes out. This could be problematic. Depending. So Murkrow, okay, Murkrow does have a Feather Dance. So, alright, physical Pokemon just don't get to do anything. That's why, even when burned at half health, you're like, hey, you don't touch me at all. So, that's gonna be a Bullet Punch. Decent hit. Murkrow does have to respect that. It can get the Roost, though, and then still, like, gain on it. So, the burn 
Like, if it wasn't for the burn, Mirror Room probably would have already won by now. Um, but now Scizor's going to keep sending up those bullet punches. Already have the reduced power. So now it's doing... I want to say, like, a little less than a quarter. So yeah, that's when you take those roosts on the Murkrow. You get back up to full. Dark Pulse. Roost, roost, roost. Dark Pulse. Take out the Scizor and then call it game. Ooh! Throwing down the X's are right there. That's going to be more damage. That super effective hit is where it's at. But it looks like the opponent was trying to get that priority down and then waiting. So now Murkrow seems to be in a bit of a problem. Just going to throw out the Dark Pulse. And... Si what? What? It had enough to KO all along? Yo, that's ridiculous. But you had to get that way because if you threw out the Dark Pulse, the Bullet Punch would have been faster. And without the Feather Dance, cutting the attack in half wouldn't have worked out as well. So... It worked? Dang. And that, I guess that was more of a prediction game because the opponent can't X's her on the Dark Pulse turn and needed the Bullet Punch to actually get that extra damage in there. Not very effective on that Shadow Ball. GG <laughs> it is, is pretty much how this is looking. Espeon's going to get that Dazzling Gleam in there. So super effective hit, but the Max Call Mines doesn't really matter. Murkrow with the Dark Pulse. And that is the Murkrow Sweep. I want to see another. So let's go and play another. Here we go, more massive Murkrow solo carry, because Murkrow knows what he's up, like, like, just knows what he's doing, man. This is, knows what's up, this is great. I mean, I've always thought M Murkrow had, like, a cool, mischievous little design, and then gave the Prankster abilities, like, the perfect theme, when the theme is just right. And now, it, it, when you play it as a setup tank, it, it does whatever it wants. It just styles up, like, the Eviolite really coming through. It, so many cool things, just... So many cool things. So that's going to be the call mine. Now, this is some damage to deal with right here. The Mega Camera has that sheer force. Does the damage. Oh, went for the Fissure. Doesn't affect Murkrow. Come on, Camera Up. You're better than this. So that's going to be a call mine. All right. All right. We'll, we'll give you that one. Let's see, let's see where the damage ends up. We'll see if that was actually game changing right there. And uses the eruption. There we go. So that's the big damage onto the Murkrow. And... Even with that first call mine, like, he would have been able to play through. Like, the the d return... I'm trying to justify this because I don't want to take away from Murkrow's battle just because the opponent made a misplay. But, uh, yeah, now there's the eruption. Still at full health, but the extra call mine not really looked like it would matter. Like, Murkrow would have just not been able to call mine right here and would have had to do an early roost and then still take less damage after doing the roost. So we're still fine. We're still looking fine. But, yeah, you can match up to that massive eruption damage. Crazy. So, Murkrow... Oh, surviving on three hit points. That's when you, like, you put your hands to the... Like, or you give your fate to the gods and say, what is my damage roll? Because looking at the damage rolls, you know, high-end one might have done it. Back-to-back high-end ones could have, like, messed up those calcs. That's still a solid hit right there, but Murkrow's going for those roosts now. So, going to be able to deal with it. And just because, just because I am a coward like that, I would eat, the, I would like eat the eruption. I would go for another roost, and that start spamming the call mines. But it's all about when you take those. And I think Camerupt is out of call mines. Was that five? So the opponent has to use PP up. I know, feels bad, man. I know what that's all about. But now we're going into the Altaria. Not Mega though, so we actually don't have to worry about like Pixelate Hyper Voice just destroying the Merker off that super effective hit. And there's a Feather Dance, so it's like just in case you're Dragon Dance. Just in case you're Dragon Dance. So, attack's gonna fall. Ooh, the Moonblast coming in. But we already have a lot of Calm Mind boosting. And Murkrow going to tank it like a boss. And that's going to be the roosting right there. So, yeah, guys, camera up, ran out of PP. And then Murkrow was just too healthy off of that. So, hit points restored. Altaria's Moonblast. Still not gonna do anything. Like, he's throwing out the damage. Really, this is like, this is the tank setup. This is how it works. And then the only thing that can shut Murkrow down at this point is a crit. But he's just going to go plus six and win. GG. Mer er, Altaria without the Dragon Dance. Looking like it's not the worst thing. Oh, the Perish Song. All right, buddy. You got a couple turns to make it quick now. So, Perish Count falls to three. That's going to be a withdraw on the Altaria, which means free damage coming in. And Murkrow's like, all right. All right, I'm going to see what you're up to. Goes into the Swampert. Swampert has to eat that Dark Pulse. And that will be a one-hit KO. No crit. I mean, the Murkrow's doing more damage. The reason why I didn't put the Calm Mind is I didn't think it would put out this damage, but it does. Good job. <laughs> this is actually surprising me. Like, I thought Murkrow was good, but now I think Murkrow's great. Well, great, uh, excellent. Either way, it's more OP than I thought. 
beautiful. Uh, so, sadly, looks like Murkrow is not going to get the one. Unless, like, is there a crit from the heavens? Is it like, hey, you know what? That Parish Song was cheap. You deserve this one, Murkrow. So, Dark, Dark Pulse on the Altaria. Wait, no, wait. Wow. We don't even need a crit to take out the Altaria. Dang. He did it, guys! He fought the Parish Song and won! I love those moments. It's like, last turn. Now, if that was, like, the last Pokemon, that would have been super hype. But Murkrow apparently had it in the bag all along. Never should have doubted. Beautiful. Dang, so good. All right, this is last Fan Fridays, guys. It's got to be the last Fan Fridays for how amazing that was. Hope you guys enjoyed this week's Fan Fridays. Hope you guys enjoy your week. Enjoy your weekend. Have a nice day. Thank you for watching. If you want to be on Fan Fridays, comment a battle code down below and receive praise.